Hi, in this slide, uh, I want to talk about uh, George Leonard's concept of the path of endless climax. And in his book, he does a nice job of, of talking about uh, why learning how to learn and mastery seems to be taking more and more of a hit because everybody is so ADD, they're so distracted, they want quick results, they just don't want to stick with anything like they used to in the old days when frankly there wasn't anything else to do or no distractions. Mastery was kind of the only show around. And he diagrammatically represents this by, okay, we, we get better, and then we say, what's next? And we get better, what's next? And we get better. There's no plateau at all. And uh, there's no failing forward. It's just everything seems to be effortless. And he, he, he theorizes about, well, where does this come from? And, and he zeroes right in on if you look at all the ads on television or magazines or any place that's trying to sell you something, they're basically trying to sell you magic silver bullets. And they're saying, for example, would people work this hard? And you see guys diving on beach volleyball and eating sand and making incredible saves. Would people work this hard? And it shows five seconds of it uh, for, you know, Bud Light. And then it shows people quaffing Bud Light for, for 10 seconds. I mean, it's a 15-second commercial. And you might see four or five of these, uh, you know, during a commercial band at, at a given TV show. And so we get this constant story of you deserve, you can have instantaneous gratification. Why wait? Why delay? Just get out your credit card and master the possibilities and charge it and enjoy it now. And you can always just pay later. And since this will make you more successful and more happy, you'll have no problem making the money and then some more to sort of pay off. It's an investment in your future. Think about it. When actually it's just consumption and indulgence. This happens... Uh, at a corporate level, sometimes you see a company that, you know, wins a lottery, they've got good technology, something takes off, and they, they really have a fast growth period, and they kind of think that's going to go on forever, and they keep, uh, you know, promoting people and giving better benefits, et cetera, and then their their their, their concept uh, matures out, and the, the, the pail that they find in the marketplace is filled. Competitors start to come in, and all of a sudden, they, they have a serious uh, recrunch. Uh, downsizing, whatever. I'm, I have a, a BlackBerry storm that I've had for, I don't know, four or five years, and I'm watching, you know, research in motion, um, you know, who makes the BlackBerry uh, starting to crash and burn because they haven't been able to keep up with the iPhone, uh, you know, uh, technology trend, for example. Um, we certainly see it at a national level where basically politicians are saying, look, you deserve a break today. Trust me, if you send $100 of taxes and you're going to get $1,000 of benefit and the math works, what 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 benefit can I give you now by borrowing more from your children to deliver it now? Um, and that's all it is. It's a transfer of wealth from mostly from future generations to indulging us right now. And the math doesn't work. Uh, obviously, Greece and Spain and a couple other countries are illustrating this for us and all first world countries right now. Uh, and we're you know we're running out of time ourselves. So what's the solution to getting over the, this expectation that I should never be bored and so forth? To say, well, you know, being bored is good because every time I feel bored, what I really should do is that should be my cue to say, wait a minute, how do I put on a different set of lenses? How do I look deeper? What is the next level? What are some fresh insights for doing it? What's, uh, you know, push the wheel of learning, ask some questions, come up with some theories, find some cheap experiments, use flow design, get a little input from my master, you know, my teachers, whatever, and then get back on the path and take it to the next level. Another variation of that is when we have um, uh, sort of excitement, like, oh, wow, look, that's cool. Or we have frustration, oh, look, that's bad, or we find ourselves being judgmental. What's happened is we have seen a trigger in our environment that is appealing to one of our addictions, if we're all excited, or one of our aversions, uh, you know, if we're sort of judgmental and critical and negative. And we have to say, gee, that reaction that I just had that tr to that trigger, this is a teaching moment. What's the insight and how do I get in touch with my addiction or my aversion, and how do I start to grow through it and not let it knock me off the path and get back on the path? Um, so we basically take a 3D press, and we sort of center, and we start to think about all the things that are good about who we are and where we are and what we have in all of our opportunities, et cetera. We embrace the facts, and we get back on the path. So let's not 
delude ourselves that the path of endless climax exists. It's not, um, it's just not the law of nature. It's just not the facts of life. Thank you.